Greetings and salutations my friend. This is not a video I had planned. Um, this is not a video I wanted to do right now. I'm working on a completely different video as we speak. I'm making a video on Tom McDonald specifically, an analysis video of sorts. And I was away for a while and I forgot my card, memory card, on which I had video files that I could edit and prepare and you know, make the video. But I couldn't work on it this weekend, so uh, there goes that, right? Uh, it's coming next weekend, but in the meantime, I was thinking there's something very important that has happened just recently because it's been exactly 10 years since my surgery. If you're new to the channel, just a um, short recap, I am a uh, male to female, back to male, detransitioner. I had a bottom surgery 10 years ago, basically I had butchered, suffered a lot of consequences from that, you know, uh, horrid, horrid complications. Some of them um, I'm still suffering with to this day, like pains and occasional bleeding. It's still happening, it pretty much limits my day-to-day uh, -day life. There's a lot of things I can't do physically because of this surgery and it, at times it feels like I'm disabled, you know. Feels very geriatric for my age to uh, not be able to uh, do a lot of things other people my age are doing, you know. It's life ruining in certain ways. And you might be asking yourself, well, what the hell pushed me to make that decision in the first place? It's not that I necessarily felt like I was a woman. Uh, it's more that I just didn't want to be a man, you know, for many reasons. Well, number one, I uh, experienced a lot of bullying for being gay, even though I didn't really know I was gay at that time, but it seems that everyone else around me at school knew and was bullying me for that reason. And part of that was also to do that with the fact that I didn't want to be like other men when most of the masculinity I was exposed to was the sort of this toxic sort, you know, um, just the bully, the uh, guy who's putting others down, you know, just a macho type, something I never personally was and I was just unable to relate to that and because of that I started to actually hate myself as a man and everything that made me a man which led me down that path which is you know I was young I was stupid you know I was stupid and I was naive and uh, I've learned from my mistakes and uh, documented a lot of that mental uh, journey on my channel here but now it's been 10 years since uh, the surgery hello howdy how are you and all of that um, before we continue, just wanted to let you know that if you want to hear me talk about food, music and relationships or if you want to find out what are the ideas for the future videos that I have planned, consider subscribing to my Patreon for this exclusive update video. And now I'll just shut up so I can talk some more instead. And it's something I always think about a lot every time around this time of year, you know, it can feel quite somber in many ways, but this year it's been a 10 year anniversary and it feels even worse than it usually does, you know, like it's stupid. Actually, you know, what's the difference between nine years and 10 years other than, you know, one year apart, but I don't know, there's just something perhaps culturally based that makes us put a significance on such round numbers, you know, as 10, 50, you know, uh, stuff like that. It's also very interesting uh, from a psychological perspective 
why do we uh, so much attention on anniversaries? Why do we remember anniversaries? Uh, you know, anniversaries are usually related to something really good happening, you know, as you celebrate your, your birthday, uh, the anniversary of marriage, etc. And then there are those anniversaries that we remember because we associate them with those unpleasant experiences or losses, right? Well, you remember the day when um, your family members died, when your loved one dies, right? Like, that's not something you forget. It's stuck with you, right? right? And then you feel this somberness around the time of the year when that day is you know, closing in. For why it's interesting to me is because everything in between those yeah, extremes, you know, those good anniversaries and those bad anniversaries, those things we remember, everything between those can be quite ordinary, you know, just day to day. But it's those really good things that happen in our lives and those really bad things that happen in our lives that we tend to remember the most. And we attach a lot of significance to those. And here I am, perhaps attaching a lot of significance to uh, my past traumas with the surgery, right? And it's hard to believe that it's been uh, 10 years. You know, like, sometimes it feels like it just happened, right? Like. Sometimes I still wake up from nightmares about this happening. Other times I do get those bad panic attacks and it feels like it is happening right now, it just happened recently, but then you know, you just chill down and you know, it's, it's okay, it's okay. It's been a long time ago. The question is, how should I look at this? Is this 10 years of misery has my life actually been completely, completely ruined during those 10 years. Well, it's been a long journey from the bottom, you know? It's been a very long journey, it's been a tough journey, but I'm happy with where I am. And I get a lot of comments of people wishing me the best of luck with uh, recovery. And I always appreciate those comments, but it always makes me think, what exactly is recovery, right? Am I still recovering after 10 years? Well, physical recovery uh, after such surgery normally can take, well, up to one year, two, on average, right? I mean, there are complications I still suffer from at this point. I don't think that is something I can recover from unless I'll have more surgeries to fix things but that is not something I actually want to do because I'm very skeptical towards uh, any um, surgical procedures that can be sold as a solution. I just think it comes with a lot of risk. It's unnecessary risk. It's absolutely not worth it. Un unless of course you know the purpose of such procedure is to save your life. You know I think we can all agree that those are instances where such procedures might be necessary. Yeah like I said I don't think my body can recover anymore from that. And then we can talk about um, psychological recovery. Um, I would say I'm pretty happy with where I am today. I have my bad days and I had a lot of those recently actually but in general I'm I'm doing well you know like I'm trying to look at the bright side of life you know like in that Monty Python song but at the same time you know you can't stop yourself from having those thoughts in your head or even in the back of your head right whenever like let's say taking a shower and you know it's I love having clothes on because they protect you from the reality of your body right uh, like you don't have to think about um, what you have done and the consequences of that because your clothes are covering it all I love having clothes on but when you're showering right well 
I'm not showering with my clothes on, just for the context's sake. <laughs> um, you're left completely alone with your body, right? In a, a very, very small space. Well, if you have a really big shower, it's bigger space. And if you have a tiny, tiny shower, it's a tiny space. But on average, it's a pretty small space, a shower, right? And there you are, alone with your body. There's no escape from it, right? You're still, you know, you're, you're exposed. And not exposed to others, but you're exposed to yourself. And you're face to face with um, what you've done. And that's where it, that's when it hurts the most. That's when it reminds you, really. So, here I am today, 10 years later. It's been 10 years since the surgery. And this time I, you know, instead of dwelling on that, I want to turn it into something positive, you know. I no longer want to think of it as, oh, it's been so and so and so many years or so and so many months since this horrible mistake I did. Yeah. Um, instead, I'd rather like to think of it, who exactly was I 10 years ago? in terms of my mental state, my mental health, and who I am right now. As well as it comes to uh, my ability to make logical decisions, my ability to uh, make rational decisions, as well as my own understanding of who I am, you know, moving away from this foggy confusion to a uh, solid understanding of myself. Unless to a degree that, you know, is reasonable. I don't think it is ever possible to truly, truly know yourself. And I think it's important to accept that, otherwise you're fooling yourself. If you think that you can absolutely, completely understand yourself, like uh, it's a book that you've read a thousand times and you will know every word of, sometimes we can surprise even ourselves, you know. and. It's especially when it comes to, uh, you know, your potential. I think that is something a lot of people don't realize what they're capable of. In both, both in positive and negative sense, actually. But um, I'm speaking in a positive sense right here, right? And, for example, people who are suffering from depression, it can be very hard for them to imagine themselves living life without that crutch, you know, um, but it is, it is possible, it's just a side of you that you haven't explored and it might seem very hard to imagine life without depression when you are depressed, right? And that's why we shouldn't always trust our own judgment when it comes to our understanding of ourselves and who we are, but to some degree, I think, you know, it's good to understand yourself on some level, right? Like, why do you develop the sort of thoughts you develop? Why do you develop the feelings you develop, right? Because if you just accept them blindly and you go with it, that usually doesn't lead you uh, anywhere good. Sometimes you just have to stop and look at things from outside perspective, you know, and it's might be hard for many people because you know we are stuck in our heads right in our role well this is how i think this is how i perceive things you know we have this tunnel vision that has a certain range right and this here is what you is within your vision what you perceive and if you uh, just go for life without sitting down and thinking then you're just going along with whatever your subconscious brains decides. And uh, what I think really matters is to have the ability to uh, just perform an autopsy of our own thoughts. You know, I think that's how you really improve as a person. So at this point, it is no longer something I am letting keep me down. But at the same time, it is something I acknowledge, you know. I'm not pretending like it didn't happen. I uh, 
take full responsibility for my actions and I move on. So the next video you can expect something a bit different and March is a pretty special month because it's not only because of this particular anniversary but we have the uh, the transition awareness day in March and it's coming pretty soon and uh, I will try to cook up something special for that day I'll try to uh, cook up something that I hope will reach uh, a lot of people a lot of people who need to hear this because I think that the overall discourse around this topic whether it's about trans or detrans and all of that can be quite toxic really and I just I think we need to take steps away from that so uh, I'll see you in just a couple of days and uh, in the meantime take good care of yourself and um, have a good week and a good month and so on so um, yeah ciao